So sexual reproduction. On the planet, there's two types of sexual reproduction. There's asexual reproduction where you'll have something like a fungus that's by itself will go ahead and basically make a clone of itself, a bacteria, which will basically make a clone of itself, um, algae, things like that. Um, or there's sexual reproduction. And sexual reproduction requires a partner where you're going to split your genetic material in half and that material will come together to provide a new unique organism. So it's a little combination of mom and a little combination of dad coming together. Um, where asexual reproduction is going to be a pretty much 100% clone of the parent that's producing it. So in sexual reproduction, which is done in humans, of course, that provides a lot of genetic diversity because how we um, assort the chromosomes and genes to make the child is pretty unique. Um, there would, you'd have to have, um, I think a couple billion children to basically have two children that could be statistically exactly the same. So you can see that there's a lot of genetic diversity that goes into this. What happens is males and females are going to produce this thing called a gamete, and that is going to lead to a sperm or an egg. When they come together, that's going to be the zygote, and the zygote is basically a fertilized egg. Um, so one gamete that's modal is going to be the sperm, one gamete that's not modal is going to be the egg, um, and then together they come to make the zygote. When we have this combination, what happens is we have these things called autosomes and sex chromosomes. I know they kind of get confusing, but normally the normal complement of genetic chromosomes are going to be 46. And then what we do is to make an egg or a sperm is we split that genetic material in half. So like right now you have two copies of chromosome 1 and two copies of chromosome 2 and two copies of chromosome 3 all the way down to 22 until we get to our sex chromosomes. So and you get one from mom, one from dad. There's a little bit of reshuffling that goes on when you start getting made. So we divide that in half and that becomes 22 autosomes. Autosomes are just a fancy name of saying all the chromosomes that do everything but the sexual characteristics. So you have one more chromosome that comes in from male and female, and that's going to be the sex chromosomes. So what happens is the mom has only the X and the X, right? Because XX means female, and XY is male. So what happens is every time you go ahead and have to produce sperm or egg, the female is only going to produce XX, right? So that means one of her eggs will have an X in it, the other one will have an X in it. So she can only produce an X. Where the male, when he produces sperm, one of the X's will ha one of the sperms will have an X in it, and one of the sperms will have a Y in it. So depending on which sperm you go ahead and get, you could be male or female. So the sperm is really what dictates the sex. If you end up with an XX, you're going to be female. If you end up with an XY, you're going to be male. And clearly you could see that the sperm is the only thing that introduces the X or the Y. The mom has really no recourse here. The Y has some regions on it which are called SRYs or sex determining regions and they code for specific genes that help make testes which is called the testes determining factor um, helps causes the person to go to become male. If not this gene was missing you would just go into the default, which is female. We're actually all born females. And then at week 10, this gene is activated if you have a Y chromosome and turns you into male. If you don't have the Y chromosome, it'll continue on with the default as female. If you have a bad Y chromosome and this region is mutated or something is wrong with it, they'll continue on just to be female.
So this is kind of to show you, number one, you could see that we have two copies of every chromosome. So from 1 to 22, they're called autosomes. You'll notice that there's two copies here. You got one from mom, one from dad. So this happens in sperm where you give, you know, or, or egg. One copy goes to the, um, the egg of the sperm, and the other one will eventually go to another egg or sperm in the future. Um, so we'll give one copy copy of each during the egg and the sperm. When the egg and the sperm come together, that's when we get this doubled copy. Also, you can see the sex hormones. You can see that this one is going to be male. We have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And you can see that the Y chromosome is so small compared to the X. That's why uh, when the sperm is packaged, sperm that has the Y chromosome in it moves faster because it's carrying less of a load than with an X. That's why at birth, we see a lot higher male um, to female ratios, but males don't have the greatest immune system and they do really dumb shit things. So what ends up happening is at birth or at re, uh, reproductive age, we'll find out that there's a lot more females than males. So six differentiation, pretend that came out normal, um, happens around six to 10 weeks. Um, we're gonna start to produce the gonadal region in six weeks in the embryo, but really eight to 10 weeks is where we're gonna have the development start to come through. We have our mesonephronic um, development in males, and that's going to develop into their reproductive system. And then the paramesotronomic system in ducts, that's going to develop into the female system at week 10. And you can kind of see this is the introduction of what's happening. You see everything kind of looks the same. And um, in the future, what happens is, so this is six weeks. They both look exactly the same. Eight weeks, we're starting to have a little bit of a change, but you could see that as we get to 10 weeks, we start to see a differentiation. At 10 weeks, that Y chromosome is kicking in for this one. So what would be the labia minora? and eventually what will be the labia majora are going to start to form into the um, testes eventually. We're going to have that that um, spongiosis for the male and that's starting to change. The clitoris is starting to change into the glandus and both of them have the anus. As we keep going you can see that the prepuce um, will become sort of that hood of the penis. They both have the prepuce. Um, the glandus or the clitoris is the same structure. You could see that the labia majora and labia minora basically become the shaft of the penis. Um, and then we can keep going on, but we'll stop there. As the male starts to develop um, as an embryo, somewhere around seven months, that's when the testes will start to be produced. And what happens is the testes will sort of stay really close to the body. After a month, that's when the testes will drop out of the um, testicular sac. So that's one of the things that doctors will check with males to see if it hasn't dropped, if it has dropped. Usually it happens with a month or two after the baby's been born, but it's not unusual to see even a year old person to go ahead and not have their testes dropped. Usually if it doesn't happen by three, what they'll do is they'll actually go in and um, do surgery to pull physically pull the testes out and if they don't do that this is gonna the the person will be able to produce viable sperm and just again um gametes you have um normal complements and females they're going to split their genetic material in half um and that's going to be called um meiosis and um, that's where you split your genetic material in half. They come together to become the zygote. The zygote will develop into the baby, and then sort of the cycle goes on. I'm not gonna go through mitosis um, because I'm assuming you've done it a million times, but um, I'll post something about it if you need it.